Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Las Vegas Virtual College Fair. We are going to wait just a minute or so and let um, a few other students find their way in, click all the right Zoom buttons to join us. So give us just another minute or so and we will get started. Okay, I think we will go ahead and get started. So again, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Las Vegas Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. We have a great group of colleges and speakers lined up for you tonight. Um, so hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the colleges that you are interested in. So just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Um, your cameras and microphones are off, so don't worry, we can't see you or hear you. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. If for some reason you can't or that changes throughout the presentation, just send us a message in that Q&A box and we'll be happy to help troubleshoot that with you. Um, speaking of the Q&A section, that's really the best way for you to engage with our speakers this evening. So if you have questions throughout the session for any of the colleges, feel free to drop that question in that Q&A section. Um, it can be to an individual college or a specific college, or it can be a general question that you would like uh, multiple perspectives on. Um, so feel free to ask those at any point. It doesn't just have to be while that college is presenting. They're happy to answer questions throughout the remainder of the session as well. Also, don't forget, this is just one of many different sessions being offered um, through StriveScan. So be sure to check the website where you signed up to see if there are any others you might be interested in. And then don't forget that this session is being recorded and will be available on the StriveScan website where you signed up within about a week or so. So our game plan for tonight, this is what the schedule looks like. We are in the at the bottom in the middle, session C6. Um, so we have six. Uh, uh, colleges lined up for you and we are going to kick things off with the University of Illinois at Chicago. All right, thank you so much guys for attending. We're gonna try to keep this lively because I know it's probably late and you've had a long day, <laughs> just like the rest of us. My name is Nita and I have my screen up, but I happily represent the University of Illinois at Chicago. So I'm gonna spend about five minutes just so you can kind of get acclimated in, like, in case you've never been to Chi-Town as we call it. I will refer to UIC or the University of Illinois at Chicago as UIC just for the purposes of the presentation. So this is our amazing campus. You may recognize lakes, um, Lake Michigan, the Sears Tower, the Loop, but all of this 200 acres surrounded by all these great companies from Google to McDonald's are, this is all part of the landscape of our 200 acres and this is all UIC. So it's a pretty big campus, but classroom sizes are still usually 19 to one. So as we continue, this is myself and I am the West Coast recruiter. My name is Nita. So this is kind of a very brief overview. Um, we're just gonna go over admissions, paying for UIC, Q&A to some extent, and then discover.uic.edu is really our major hub right now, especially during COVID for you to be acclimated to our campus. So I'm from Chicago. I've lived on the West Coast a couple of years. And as I put here, you can feel free to be honest with you. Some of you are so ready to get away, it's not funny. Others of you might be terrified of going away, but no matter what your major, or if you don't know what to do, that's our point here today is to, you know, kind of help you network, explore, find yourself through our colleges. So it's okay if you're nervous. So as we continue, UIC is located right on the West Loop of Chicago, as I showcase, three blocks away from the United Center where the Bulls and Blackhawks play. Um, we personally have concerts from Travis Scott to Nick Jonas, Lupe Fiasco, and then you're in the center of so many festivals, so many events that take place non-COVID. So Google's and McDonald's headquarters are within a mile. Um, Granger, Groupon, there's so many great internship opportunities, no matter what your major. You really don't need a car here. Um, you can bring a car if you'd like, but you'll get a U-Pass, which is a transit pass included in your tuition. We have campus shuttles, um, and you're within 45 minutes each of two different airports, international and non, that can take you back to the West Coast in three and a half hours. So it's a pretty quick flight. So, so much to do, food, museums, comedy clubs. So that just kind of gives you the landscape of what Chicago entails. So as we move on, um, these are just some quick pointers. I won't go through all of them. NCAA sports team, no football, unfortunately, but we're pretty big on basketball. Tier one research university, nearly 100 majors, 70 minors. 
Um, the medical district is what we call our center on site for hospitals. So we're really strong in the pre-health. Um, nursing, pre-med, law, architecture, theater, STEM, psych, business education are some of our top majors coming from the West Coast. Um, there's eight dorms. You don't have to live in them freshman years, surprisingly. Free laundry if you do. Um, we have 400 student clubs, four seasons, so you can still swim and go to the beach. It gets pretty hot in the summer. Lots of job ops, Boeing, other major corps. And Chicago is just a pretty nice place to be. Midwestern values, people you can chat with, not really pretentious. And we definitely are top in the nation amongst public colleges. You also can take part in 200 plus study abroad opportunities. So as we continue briefly, this is just the landscape of the things I just showed you, just so you kind of get a view of you know, what you're looking at if you've never been to Chicago. These are some other fun things that we're known for, from museums to the Shedd Aquarium, famous Chicago hot dogs and pizza. So this is one of our dorms, and it's a multi-million dollar dorm that just opened last August. It has its own Starbucks that our honor students actually manage. Um, but this is just one of eight dorms that you can choose from, or we can, we have apartments we can assist you in seeking. So diversity is so diverse at UIC that we actually don't have diverse num diversity numbers. Um, we are a premier campus for LGBTQ, 31% first generation um, ranks for our diversity level. So it's not something we just brag about, it's something that actually exists. Um, we have a lot of social good. This is a garden project that our students were doing to assist a convalescence home for senior citizens. So con consistent um, student and civic engagement in our 400 clubs. We've been ranked best public colleges, most, most transformative, top 10 best value, Wall Street Journal. So we're pretty proud of that. We're huge on research. Um, one of the top 200 research universities in the world. We actually have a $2,500 research grant for students, not just STEM majors or math, engineering, et cetera, but just even if you are a business major or English major, um, lots of research, which propels a lot of money back into the school. Um, we are on the Common App, guys. So um, on the Common App, there's a $60 application fee or waiver. We're test optional for 2021. And these are kind of the things we're looking for, a personal statement, letters of rec, optional, grade trends, strength of schedule. It's really gonna depend on, we have 100 majors, so it's gonna depend on your major, kind of what you have to do. These are kind of some of the essay prompts that I don't really have much time to go through for the Common App, but I just encourage you to pick topics that are really strong for you so that you can stand out. Um, we just want you to write about yourself, what you, what you really know. Some of the applications like the Honors app will ask for specialized things, but we really just want you to be you, especially in a time frame where you can't really come on campus and meet with us personally. Um, if you, um, this again is kind of a recap of what you need to apply with. And then these are some of the deadlines for it. So some deadlines are a little earlier than others, but we just encourage you to pick one and go for it. And then transferology, in case you're bringing in transfer um, scores, et cetera, from a community college is something we can assist you with. So paying for college, these are kind of the tuition rates and fees. So 13,000 versus 27, these are some of the optional items, but remember you can live off campus. Um, you can kind of pick and choose what you wanna do. So we find that a lot of California students don't pay more at USC than what they pay at, at an actual University of California school. So I, this is our school code. These are kind of some of the scholarships open. And then we welcome you for your application. So I'm gonna pass us on, this is kind of just our model, but I'm gonna pass us on to Urbana. And I thank you so much for your time. Awesome, thank you so much, Nita. Okay, I will, James is ready to go, so I will pass it over to him. <laughs> How's that look? It's all good? Looks great. All right, hey everyone, my name is James Gilby. I'm with the University of Illinois Bar Urbana Champaign. A um, little bit about ourselves. We are about two and a half hours south of Chicago, depending on how fast you drive. Uh, we are about two hours um, east, or sorry, uh, uh, west of Indianapolis, about 2.5 hours from St. Louis. So we're right in that middle, uh, middle bracket. Um, the power of the eye, this is something we've been using a long, for a long time. We really believe in innovation and individuality at University of Illinois. Um, the individuality, um, really, we, we base it upon really giving those students experience within four years, the best we can do with our academic colleges, but also giving them that experience to get a job and employment afterwards. Um, it's something we really are proud of. We have 92 uh, percent retention rate and a 90 percent rate of, of graduation within four years, which is one of the highest 
for any uh, large state university. Um, so it's pretty cool. Another thing about the power of the eye um, with innovation, um, uh, we were founded as a uh, land grant 150 years ago. Uh, one cool thing about being a land grant, um, the fact is that we got that money or that land from Abraham Lincoln, but uh, which is a, a pretty cool story to itself. But uh, three things that's cool about our land grants that we have a lot of space. Uh, we, have a, we have a vet school, a law school, and a medical school on our campus. Um, innovation has come from a long, a long period of time. Uh, the supercomputer was one of the first places that started was on the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign from 1923 to 19, uh, 1945. Uh, the world's first web browser, Mosaic, uh, was also founded on, uh, from, on our campus in 1993, that, which led to other innovations from our alumni, YouTube, Yelp, PayPal, uh, minus Elon Musk, LEDs, MRIs, integrated circuits, and transistors were all founded at University of Illinois. So there's some pretty cool thing. Also, we made our own COVID-19 test, um, saliva-based test, FDA approved. Um, so that's innovation. Our, our students are tested twice a week. All our students, not all of our students, but most of our students are on campus at this time. So it's pretty cool um, from that perspective. Um, this is our campus profile. So we're just under 34,000 students. Puts us right in the middle of the Big Ten. We're big on diversity, and that's because of the Chicagoland area that we do get most of our, a lot of our students from. Um, and also, we have a large amount of students, our countries represented on our campus. So you're always not that far from someone who's going to speak a different language from you. Um, which is really cool. Um, this is our, our enrollment by residency. Our non-residents right around 25%. And our, our biggest population of students is from the state of California, just around 300, uh, 370 students. Um, our biggest areas of San Jose, San Diego, and the Irvine School District. Um, but we do get students from all, all, all over the U.S., uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are our academic colleges, pretty diverse. Um, we're, we are well known for the Granger College Engineering, that's, that's a top 10 engineering school, um, computer science rounding around four or five, computer engineering, civil mechanical, uh, nuclear radiology. Um, we're also known for the agriculture and consumer uh, environmental science, which we call ACES. We have a thousand acre farm over there, uh, which is a great perspective. You're looking for those kind of uh, high tech um, environmental science and animal science because that's a kind of a, a push through for animal science. Uh, smaller schools are the College of Applied Health, a lot of pre-professional programs there, pre-health, um, pre-dentistry, kinesiology. Um, College of Liberal Arts is our biggest uh, college. Uh, we have uh, 70 programs in that College of Liberal Arts. Um, so well-known programs is biochemistry, cellular, molecular biology. Um, also, our CS Plus programs is a double degree in CS Plus engineering, which is pretty cool. We also know for the College of Flying of line and applied art. Um, our school design has our architectural program and our college of business accounting is number two in the country. It's been that for a while. Um, some competitive programs in the Geese College of Business, um, but a lot of cool stuff going on at UIUC with academics. Our Champaign-Urbana, we're not that small. Uh, we're right around 260,000 people. You really want to see us, uh, check us out on Google Maps. Um, why the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana? Because Champaign-Urbana actually goes right in the middle of our campus. It is split evenly between the whole campus. So you're walking back and forth. A lot of good stuff. We call this micro urban area because both of the Champaign Urbanas have downtown areas. We have buses going 10 minutes every time, every, every 10 minutes going downtown to Champaign Urbana. And the campus town is four streets that surround the University of Illinois. This is a map of where we're located. Uh, so if you're coming from Las Vegas, take a flight from Las Vegas to Dallas or uh, Chicago, not that hard to get um, to Champaign Urbana from there. Big on student involvement, 1600, uh, 1600 no, now it's 650, I think it was, uh, 650 student organizations. So we're really big on that. Uh, we also have Research Park on our campus, 150 acres um, of, of just property for businesses, 133 companies on that, a lot of five, Fortune 500, and uh, an incubator of uh, 32,000 uh, square foot building just for, built for entrepreneurship skills and building your own uh, workups, uh, sorry, entrepreneurship um, skills. Uh, we are in the Big Ten. Football's getting better. Basketball was going to be legit until COVID-19 hit. I think we we're going to be a bit of a sleeper. We have a leadership office as well. Big club sports and intramurals. A lot of cool stuff. By the numbers, you can take a look at that. Um, big on research. $600 million last, uh, uh, last year on just research alone. We are tier one research university. Love study abroad. I'm a study abroad alum. Went to Yonsei University. Big fan of study abroad. We have a huge study abroad office as well. Um, our support services, the only one I want to touch base on is our career center. It's all by the academic college. Uh, we believe that students are better prepared with just working with the academic college to find their jobs because liberal arts college, a lot of those kids are looking for medical school or vet school or whatever have you. Business, they want to get a job ASAP, liberal arts. 
so every academic college is going to be a little bit different. Um, housing, that's a whole different conversation. 35 residence halls, 12 of them are off campus, the rest of them are on campus. Look for the great food, um, living, 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 learning communities. And I got 30 seconds. In my last 30 seconds, I want to have you guys check out Illini Success. Um, Illini Success is really a three-year trend on what students do after they graduate. We're really proud about that. So if you Google that, you'll see rates of, uh, of grad, uh, graduates, what, how long it took them to graduate, the jobs they're getting, and some great opportunities. Thanks so much. I'm going to pass the mic. Awesome. Thanks, James. Okay, and next up we have um, Illinois Wesleyan University. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Klebeck. I'm the Assistant Director for Regional Admissions with Illinois Wesleyan University. Um, we're actually going to take a small trip. Um, I just want to make sure that my screen is being shared properly. Is this still loading? There we go. Um, just about 45 minutes away from U of I Champaign-Urbana is Illinois Wesleyan. Um, we're located in a city called Bloomington Normal, Illinois. So also two towns right next to each other, which is kind of funny. Um, and we're a small liberal arts university. So maybe a little different from the schools that we've um, heard about so far. We um, at Illinois Wesleyan are, though we are a small school, we're just about 1600 students on campus. We're located in a big college town. So um, funny enough, Illinois State University is about two miles away from our campus with 22,000 other students right next door. So we kind of get the best of both worlds at our school with a really wonderful campus community, incredible mentorship with your faculty um, and relationships in those classrooms that are really fun and engaging, but you also kind of get that um, just exciting college experience that I know that most students um, are kind of looking for as well. So um, we're technically ranked the third best small college town in the country and I really enjoyed it when I was a college student too. So part of that idea is that Illinois Wesleyan kind of breaks through the norm of a college experience maybe in that um, campus vibe but also on our um, academic side as well. So we're a very interdisciplinary campus. Um, we have everything ranging from business to the fine arts um, and also are really well known for the science with the direct entry school of nursing and i'll get into that a little bit more here um we since we are a liberal arts school that's what we love most is the humanities and social sciences um we're very well known for um, environmental studies sociology if you want to do research in history or political science and pre-law um, this is definitely a home for that we love students who um, want to do independent research so um, again we are a small school but the benefit of that is that we only have undergraduate students so all of our faculty who are doing research need students like you to help them um, to potentially publish by the end of their four years. And um, you get the opportunities to do your own independent research with them. And so that doesn't have to just be in the social sciences, but of course the natural sciences as well. Um, we are very well known for all of our pre-health programs, um, medical school specifically. Of course, that nursing um, is, is very, very big at Wesleyan, but even unique programs like engineering, students can find a home here. If they want to do study outer space um, and reactions in outer space through our astrochemistry um, concentration or uh, follow a 321 engineering pathway, this is absolutely the place to do that. Um, but then we're very well known for the fine arts. We're ranked 7th in the nation for musical theater and 11th in the nation for design and tech and theater. Um, and as I mentioned, business is actually the biggest major at our school. State Farm Insurance was founded in our city in the past um, CEOs and current CEOs of State Farm are Illinois Wesleyan graduates. So our business kids have a really, really great connection with that um, company. As I mentioned, research is a big thing at our school, um, but that hands-on learning and specifically um, flexibility within their program. Um, if you are that student that love the sciences, but also want to continue in music um, or really anything you can think of, we want you to do it all here. Um, we also really love to bridge the gap between the community and our campus. Um, we have an entire center dedicated to helping students do that. Take your wonderful passions that you've kind of um, grown with in the classroom and help the community in some way. Um, one of our students I love talking about actually helped to build a tool library in our city where instead of renting books, it's tools. Um, so if our people in the community want to um, improve their home in different ways, they could actually do that in our city because of, what, of one of our students who created that and got a grant on cam campus to actually do so. So really exciting stuff. 
Um, I think it's really, really important to talk about diversity in campus, but more importantly, how we're going to support students from marginalized communities on our campus. Um, we are a small school and we recognize that we are a predominantly white institution, like most institutions in the country. Um, and though we, you know, would want to see that change, um, we, we know and recognize the importance of supporting our students of color and students from all different walks of life on our campus. So it actually starts right away with a pre-orientation on campus for both um, students Students who are in, or really any student who's interested in talking about diversity. Um, we actually support students of color for an internship on campus and we host academic series um, talking about different um, programs or different um, academic uh, I guess programming related to students of color, really students from um, marginalized communities in general. Um, we also have a really large pride community um, and queer community on our campus. Um, and we support students um, with different clubs on campus from all different cultural and ethnic backgrounds. Most importantly, we're here to listen and learn. Um, we really allow and are excited for our students to have those difficult dialogues and difficult conversations. Um, and, and we kind of encourage it. And I think that makes our students kind of better to, to walk into this world. Um, we love supporting our students and we're there for them. Uh, our, one of our past presidents actually said that, um, and it's kind of become a mantra on, on our campus, that we support our students to not only do well in their futures, but do good for the world. Um, and we've seen our students uh, really kind of jumpstart themselves into their careers after college, where we're ranked seventh in the nation for job placement, um, that our, our, our kids really do well, and they, they love what they do when they, they leave this campus, and we're here to support them along the way. So um, I'd love to talk to you more and uh, message me in the chat if you'd like to. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Indiana University Bloomington. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Let me go ahead and pull up my presentation for you. All right, so at Indiana University, we really do feel like we offer what we consider to be the ideal college experience. Um, so we've got a beautiful campus, a very active and vibrant student body and campus culture. Um, very um, beautiful, you know, setting in the college town of Bloomington, and then of course our world class academic um, we've got about 33,000 students, so we're definitely a big place. Students are coming from all 104, or from all 50 states, over 140 different countries, and we're about 45% out of state and 10% international in our student body as well, so pretty diverse for a large public institution. Um, also, despite our size, we have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio, average class size of about 30 students, so even though we are a large school, we still place emphasis on um, small classes, good personal attention for you. In fact, less than 6% of our classes actually have more than 100 students in them. Um, so it's actually pretty rare for you to be in that larger lecture hall setting. Um, another unique aspect of Indiana as a large university is that we have about 80% of our students at the undergraduate level. So a lot more access to those professors and those research opportunities that you might find at a large public institution. Um, I think one of the things that we pride ourselves the most on, academically speaking, is not only the breadth of our curriculum, but the flexibility that we offer as well. So we definitely encourage interdisciplinary study. If you're a student that maybe doesn't know what they'd like to do yet, or you have a few different areas that you would like to explore, we certainly encourage that exploration and give you the freedom in your academic program to do so. So the majority of our students are actually graduating with more than a single major. So they're major minoring, they're double majoring, sometimes even triple majoring, which I think is a little bit crazy, but apparently it can be done. Um, we do have over 200 different majors for you to choose from. Um, if you don't find one that meets your interests, you can actually create your own. Um, so we have the option for you to um, pull together some different programs across the university to create that interdisciplinary study program for you. Um, a few highlights for you as far as our academics are concerned. We're probably most well known for our Kelly School of Business. The Kelly School has some unique concentrations within the program as well. So you'll find the typical accounting, marketing, finance, but you'll also find things like supply chain management and real estate and business and law. Um, so ways to kind of set yourself apart from the pack once you graduate. Kelly School students also are very well prepared to achieve success. 
94% of our Kelly grads have a job offer or are accepted into a graduate program within three months of graduation. So that kind of speaks for itself as far as the strength of programming that you'll receive and the networking and connections within that program. We also have our Jacobs School of Music, which is a world-renowned conservatory style music program. Benefits you even if you're not interested in studying music because we have a literal world class arts and culture scene right there on our campus for you to take advantage of. Jacobs alone hosts over 1100 different performances on our campus every year, including seven fully staged operas and ballets. As far as what to do outside the classroom, obviously no shortage of things to do or get involved in. Over 750 different clubs and organizations. We have about 15 to 20% of our students participating in Greek life. So fraternities and sororities are definitely an active part of our campus culture, but they also don't completely dominate the social scene either. Um, and of course, we're passionate about our athletics within the Big Ten. So um, basketball and football are definitely big draws for us. Our basketball games actually have the largest student section in the nation and our assembly hall seats over 19,000 people. So quite an experience to go to a basketball game. And then of course we're situated on this gorgeous traditional college campus um, located in the beautiful college town of Bloomington, which is about 45 minutes southwest of downtown Indianapolis. Bloomington itself has about 80,000 people and has a lot to offer. We rank actually second just behind New York City for the number of ethnic restaurants per capita in the nation. So definitely some good food and some good shopping all within a walking or biking distance from campus. As far as um, what we're looking for when you are thinking about submitting an application and um, learning about how to join our community, we have a November 1st early action priority deadline. This is for consideration for both direct admission um, to any particular program of your choice, as well as for merit scholarship consideration. So definitely encourage you to apply by November 1st if you have the ability. You'll also hear back from us by no later than January 15th, potentially even a little bit sooner. So hopefully some good news sitting in the back pocket by the end of the year. Um, we are a test optional institution. We do allow you to self-report your test scores if you are choosing to report test scores to us. And we will actually allow you to switch your choice from test optional to test consideration as late as January 15th. So if you're a student who would like to test but hasn't had the opportunity to do so, you're welcome to apply test optional and then inform us of your decision to switch your choice by January 15th. Um, if that describes you, then reach out to one of us in the office and we can get you set up with that. We do have a secondary deadline in February 1st um, when you'll hear back from us by March 15th at the latest. And then after that, it rolls over to a case-by-case -case space available basis. Um, I would encourage you to um, connect up with me if you have any questions. I am your admissions counselor for the Las Vegas, Nevada area. So happy to answer any questions that you might have. And at this point, I will pass it on to the next colleague. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Okay, and next up we are going to go to Mills College. Hello and welcome to the Mills College presentation. My name is Diana Martinez. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Mills and I am also the uh, admissions counselor for the Nevada area. So hello. So Mills College is a private liberal arts college in Oakland, California. And we are a historically women's college. When I say historically women's college, that means for our undergraduate school, we admit women, gender non-binary students who were assigned female at birth, and we also admit trans students. So um, we have about 700 undergraduate students. We also have graduate programs. We have about 400 grad students. And in our grad programs, we admit students of all genders. So I love Mills because it's a small, very close-knit community. And you can really tell that the students there um, not only are building community on campus, but after you graduate, Mills alums are still well connected, still looking out for each other. And I can say from experience after attending a historically women's college, it was the most empowering experience I had and also the most fun. I'm still best friends with some of the students I met my very first day. And that's just how historically women's colleges are. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about us. 
here's some information about our student body here at Mills. As you can see, we have all kinds of students from all different walks of life. A lot of private colleges like to talk to talk when it talk the talk when it comes to diversity, but we also walk the walk here at Mills. Um, as you can see, almost half of our student body are first generation students, and we do have different support systems for first generation students, including a summer bridge program uh, for first gen college students. And that allows you to come onto campus early, take a few courses together, and you earn four college credits before your very first semester even begins. Uh, we have a very supportive faculty. Many of them are, as you can see, 81% identify as female and almost half of our faculty identify as faculty of color. That's really great um, because with your interactions with your professors, it's wonderful to have somebody who um, identifies the way you do, who has navigated the field you want to go into. Uh, it's great to have a mentor that has uh, undergone some of the same things you have. So that's a little bit about our community. And I'm also going to share with you a little bit about our academics. So we have more than 30 majors. What I'd like to point out about our majors, and this is common for a lot of liberal arts colleges, is that within each major, you get to choose a specialization. So for example, if I wanted to be a veterinarian, I would major in biology and then choose to tailor my major specific to uh, different types of classes that would take me on the path to be a veterinarian. Or if I wanted to learn about music technology and go into that field, then I would be a music major and then I would take classes at our well-renowned Center for Contemporary Music and learn more about music technology and the electronic side of things. And if none of our majors and their specializations quite capture what it is you want to study, um, you can also choose an individualized major. And that's where you get to create your own major and use all the different classes we have. And also you can take classes at UC Berkeley, cross transfer and supplement your, uh, your major with classes from UC Berkeley. Here is some information about our student resources. Uh, we have research opportunities for all undergraduate students if you choose to take that option. Uh, research is a really great way to get into med school or to get a great job right out of college. The wonderful thing about attending a small school like Mills is that you're a lot more likely to get research opportunities as an undergrad, you're a lot more likely also just to get in the classes you want to get into, um, to get certain scholarships that you want, uh, much more likely to get certain jobs on campus you want to get. Uh, that's one of the really great benefits about going to a small college. I also love our one on one time with our professors and our discussion based classes where you can learn a lot more about everybody in your class and their different perspectives from different backgrounds, but also you can really find your own voice. And here's a little bit more about what we have. We have our counseling and psychological services. The first eight counseling sessions for Mill students are free. We have a health clinic on campus. We have student access and support services for students who have any type of learning differences or mobility needs or even if you have a companion animal that you want to live with you in your dorm, that's the office you'd go to for that. Of course, we have a careers center as well, where you will prepare for getting a career out of college. And I will say our tight, close knit alumni network is really great for career advice as well. And they're a very supportive network. We have guaranteed housing for all of our students, but it's not obligatory to live on campus. We also have commuting resources for our students. We're right here in Oakland in the middle of the San Francisco Bay Area. I love our campus because we are like a small, beautiful oasis in the middle of a large, diverse metropolitan area. 
there is a bus that stops right in front of our front gates and it'll take you into beautiful Lake Merritt in Oakland and other stops in fabulous neighborhoods along the way. And then it'll take you into downtown San Francisco from there. So we are um, testing optional when it comes to our application. And we do take the Common App. We believe in equity and access when it comes to admissions. And also we believe in making sure that you have the right financial resources. So definitely check us out and check out our different scholarships. And if you would like to apply early action, November 15th is your deadline, but it's non-binding um, and regular decision is January 15th. And here's my information if you have any questions for me. We're also having a virtual open house October 20th, 21st, and 22nd. If you speak Spanish, we have that in on October 29th as well. So feel free to follow us at Mills Admissions on Instagram, and you can register for the event through that. Awesome. Thank you, Diana. Okay, and last but certainly not least, we have Dominican University of California. All right, perfect, thanks so much. Um, so hi everyone, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Okay. So um, yes, hi, um, so my name is Dennis. Uh, I represent Dominican University of California. We are located in San Rafael, California, which is about 12 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, for those of you who are flying into either San Francisco or Oakland, we're basically a quick 45 minute drive from both of those airports. So really, really close. Um, so I am the Assistant Director of Admissions um, for the university. I also review all applications for out of state. So um, anyone in the Nevada area, please do come contact me as well. Um, so D Dominican University of California, we started back in 1890. Uh, we started off as an all women's college. Uh, right now we are completely co-ed, um, but um, kind of like similar to Mills College, uh, we actually have more uh, number of females right now. So about 75% of our students are actually gonna be females and 25% are male students. Uh, this is one of the photos of our campus. Um, and so over the years, uh, what Dominican has done is we've purchased a whole bunch of Victorian mansions and we converted them into classrooms. So it really is one of the more picturesque campuses as you're walking around. Um, so this is actually one of our um, buildings um, if you're going to study for any of the natural sciences or if you're looking into nursing. So once again, we're only 12 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge, so it was really uh, easy access to the beach and uh, you also have really great um, access to a lot of hiking trails and just a lot of different locations to enjoy nature. Um, on our campus, we are a small private liberal art university, so our undergraduate population is a little under 1,400 students, so about 1,355. We bring in roughly each year a class of around anywhere between 260 students to about 300 students. Um, so what that means is that your average class size is going to be roughly about that 16. Um, the largest number of students that you'll ever have at one time in any given class is actually only 35. Um, once you go into our upper division courses, so you'll find that many of our students are in classrooms of eight students going to about that um, 12. So it's definitely really, really small, really private. It gives you that one-on-one -on -one touch point um, that I think is really great for our first generation or any students that are kind of going away, further away from home. Um, so kind of talking about our diversity, we are number one uh, in terms of uh, how we are ranking the West Coast for uh, student diversity. So 64% of our student bodies are actually coming from uh, a ethnically diverse background. 23% of our students are coming from a first generation family. So they're the first ones uh, in their family to attend a university. Um, and uh, with us, uh, we do offer very, very generous uh, scholarships uh, for merit base. So for um, even though our average high school GPA is a 3.51, um, that number is actually a weighted GPA. So honors, AP, dual enrollment courses that you guys have taken over the uh, over the years uh, those will add into your weighted grades um, for us our scholarship actually start as early as a 3.0 weighted GPA so going all the way up uh, up to a 3.85 so the more uh, higher the, the um, higher the grades that you have the more money that you'll be able to receive so in terms of the financial aid package um, this number is actually a little outdated about 99% of our students are actually receiving some sort of financial aid um, so 
overall our financial aid package is a little under $35,000 per year for, for students. Um, so on our campus, we have about 60 different majors and minors. Uh, we are kind of known for a couple different programs uh, in particular. So our direct admit program into nursing. Uh, so for anyone that wants to do nursing, we have a partnership with Kaiser. We also have a partnership with um, um, University of California, San Francisco. So one of the best uh, medical schools out there. You have the opportunity to work in those hospitals as early as that sophomore year, um, having that practical um, experience. Um, our business school is um, also really great we have a four plus one program that allows you to get a master's program or master's degree in five years um, under that business degree you can study anything from your basic accounting finance marketing uh, to even sports management so uh, being in the bay area you have a lot of opportunities to uh, intern especially for those professional sports teams um, so that that's another great thing uh, for communications, we are definitely known as well. Um, under the communications department, you have the opportunity to do broadcasting. Uh, we are division two for sports. So for students that want to do kind of play by play, you actually have that hands on exposures right from the start. Um, so that's one of the highlights of that communication department. Um, and for anyone that's going into kind of thinking about that medical track later on, um, any of our natural science fields, biology, chemistry, um, you know, along with pre med, um, those are things that are really going to set you up. Uh, we allow every student to do a lot of research um, and I'll touch upon that um, as part of our Dominican experience. Um, and one other program that I wanna highlight is our um, dance program. So many of the students will come to us for, uh, for our dance program, which is aligned with Alonzo King's program over in San Francisco. So for anyone that's looking into that program, um, it's definitely really, really strong. Uh, we also do have a really uh, awesome program with a partnership with Make School for anyone that's looking into applied computer science. Um, that program allows you to um, actually study in the heart of San Francisco with their own residence halls. Um, our faculty member will actually be going over to meet with you uh, basically over uh, on Fridays to kind of teach you the general education courses. Uh, this program, um, you can either um, pay us um, the money kind of uh, as a regular student up in the beginning, or if you would like, you can actually defer your payments until after you graduate from the university. And once you start earning money, uh, you know, that's where you can start paying back the university through your daily, um, through your monthly paychecks. So it's a really great way for students who are looking into doing that computer science, but maybe don't have to, uh, don't have the means to do so upfront, uh, but you can get that four year degree first and then pay back um, as you um, look at it. So at Dominican, we really believe in what we call the Dominican experience. And these are four different characteristics. Um, number one, it starts with integrative coaching. So once again, as a smaller private university, you have the opportunity to really get to know all of your, your peers as well as your mentors. So every single student that steps foot on our campus will have a peer mentor starting day one. From there, you also will have the opportunity to meet with your um, faculty advisors as well as your um, uh, um, your your academic advisors. So academic advisors are people who are going to be helping you uh, select the courses as well as helping you along with any internship opportunities. Um, and then for our faculty advisors, these are people that are going to be looking at from um, the perspective of research, if that's what you're looking for. Um, so the community engagement as part of our um, community, we want every single student to have to, um, the opportunity to experience kind of hands on work. So you have the opportunity to go either into a community uh, working for maybe nonprofit companies, or perhaps you're going into uh, research um, or finding an internship. So every single student has to have internship experience prior to graduation from our school. Um, and then the third one is a signature work. Um, every student will also do an original piece of work, which is a dissertation. So an original research, um, or it could be um, it could be a original piece of art, or perhaps a dance. Um, depending on the major that you're going to be in. And lastly, everyone will be part of a digital portfolio. So the digital portfolio is where our IT team will have the opportunity to work with you to create your own personalized website where you're able to put on your um, your uh, any photos or videos of any of the uh, experiences that you have had um, along with um, on your resume. So it's a great way if you're going for either grad school or if you're going into that professional field um, that you're able to do all that stuff. So.
Sorry, Dennis, we're, we're running short on time, so I'm going to have to to end it there. Do you have any final thoughts you need to say to wrap, wrap yeah, up? Yeah, sorry. Right. So um, um, just, just for everyone, we're on a common application. So if you can go ahead and uh, fulfill out the common app, um, our application fee is free of charge. Um, so uh, do apply um, at Dominican uh, University of California. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, to all the students who joined us tonight, we just want to say thank you for taking the time to do so. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit more about the colleges that you're interested in. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. So if you don't mind taking a couple seconds to fill that out, we'd really appreciate any feedback that you have. Also, don't forget, this is just one of many sessions being offered. Uh, so check the Strive Scan website, sign up for any additional sessions you might be interested in. And then in about a week, you can find this session's recording as well as all of our other session recordings on that website where you registered as well. So again, thank you for joining us. Have a great evening and we will talk to you soon.